Welcome to the BAM Biz Talk Podcast. I'm Angel Garcia with BAM Consulting and BAM Entrepreneurial Center. I am here today with Miss Kimberly Cowan. Good morning, Kimberly. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you and for inviting me today. How for, exciting. For sure. For yes. sure. Like I'm, uh, you know, we're, as you know, this podcast is about entrepreneurs, right? business focused, and you hit the ground running as an entrepreneur. I sure did. Never yep. look back. Mm-hmm. Nope. Never going back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my clients will let me, to be honest. Well, th- <laughs> so that's a good mark. That is good mark. Yes. For sure. Mm-hmm. So um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're a, Maid- uh, a native Midlander. I am. Born and raised. Yeah. So get into the story. Like, uh, you know, where did you go to school and... Okay. Tell us your background a little bit. Perfect. All right. So um, I'm Kimberly Cowan with Kimberly Cowan Photography. I uh, specialize in maternity and newborn. So I am a native Midlander, born and raised. I was born in 1985, so old when Sheriff Gary Painter <laughs> went Sheriff to Painter. office. Yeah. So I was the sheriff here like almost my whole life, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, basically my background. So I come from an IT background. Um I used to work at Midland College for the Midland College Foundation, and I kind of worked there part-time while I was getting my my business degree through them. So it worked out pretty nicely for me. And then when I graduated and got my associates, um, they took me on full-time to work at the foundation there. So it required a lot of networking, um, fundraising. Um, I was the data analyst there. And do on um, prospect researching and mining and all that kind of okay. stuff. So, so I got to pause you real quick. Yes. <laughs> all right. So you were doing uh, IT stuff, data yes. research, mm-hmm. and you were fundraising. Well, the research that I would do uh-huh. would help the foundation go out and fundraise. Gotcha. So, mm-hmm. Okay, because you know that that's a that's it's a, a completely different uh-huh. thing. So I was more of like behind the scenes. Gotcha. Which I was okay with that. <laughs> For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just. I don't know, something just happened in 2014. My son was born and I had already been doing photography part time um, because just like anybody, well, a lot of people in my industry, I just wanted to take better pictures of my kids. My kids are my big inspiration for my business and stuff. And um, in 2014, my son was born and just something just magically happened in my brain. Like, you know what? I'm going to take a leap of faith, trust in God. And just quit my stable full time. <laughs> it's not easy. Career, it was not easy. And then I just went full time into photography, and just been so blessed that it happened to work out for me. <laughs> well, I, I think yeah. it's because you had that passion for mm-hmm. it. You have to have you know, passion. You had a you had a purpose, and that purpose started with your own child. Mm-hmm. So you wanted to capture the 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 beauty of your child. Yes. Yeah. You know, so that's what you're doing with everyone else's child. Exactly. Which is interesting. You're just not a regular photographer. Say, you know, somebody could call you up. Oh, I need some business headshots. I do those too. And you could do those too. I do those too. I do corporate. I was voted uh, last year for the Midland Readers tell the Readers Choice for the corporate awesome. photography. Oh wow. <laughs> the gold spot. I'm like, yes. I probably did like maybe five clients that year. I'm like, yes. I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> a win's a win. But I do it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. But you consider yourself, if I read correctly, a bum. Bump to birth or what? what is bump it? Bump to baby. Bump to baby. So maternity. So bump to baby. Maternity to yeah. the baby. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's like the majority of your work? Yes, it is. So I would say about good part, like 90% it's going to be. Well, okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. So like until I read that about you, I never knew that that was even a niche. Yes. Yes, it is. But... Like you're, that's an incredible niche because there's always pregnant ladies. Oh, yes. I'm, I've got Const- good job security. For sure. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> There'll always be babies. There will always be babies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that in, in um, you know, owning a, you know, mortuary, right? You know, mm-hmm. pe- Babies are always being born and people yep. are always dying, you know, so yeah, it's the cycle. Yep. Circle yeah. of life. But you're at the beginning end of that cycle. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's beautiful. So your, your inspiration was your own ch- ch- child. My your, family. Yes. Yeah, your family. family. And then mm-hmm. you're capturing that for other families. Exactly. So I can do what I do, um, love what I do and make some money doing it. So that's the best of all worlds the goal. right it's there. That's the dream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure. Yes. Um, so like. You know, I know that that your children inspired you, but what led you to even do that to begin with? Like, um, I know everybody wants to take pictures of their children, but yeah, 
Well, it's kind of funny. So like I come from a technical background career wise, but I've always been a creative person. So you can ask my mother, I'm always always doing something creative, drawing, painting, and creating things like mm -hmm. I guess that's left brain. I guess. <laughs> one of them. Yeah, I think what's well, one of those sides of the brain. So I'm a very, very creative person. So it just kind of happened naturally for me. So I love to create. I love to make things beautiful. I'm always doing projects around the house and this and that. So it just felt it just felt perfect. Yeah. It's just that feeling I hadn't felt perfect to fall into it. So I'm like, oh look, because you do need to be kind of technically savvy to right. work these big um, these big cameras and the software and stuff that you need to polish it up and on so i don't know it's just the best of all worlds for me yeah you're you're mm -hmm. well balanced that part. yes you yes. take care of the technical but you still have that abstract thinking where you can put some art mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and i've seen a lot a lot of your pictures are very art artsy you put a lot you put a lot yes. into them it's fine art fine art photography yes fine art photography mm -hmm. and so where do you get your inspiration for the creative aspect of what where you do i together? get my inspiration so Honestly, I think a lot of my inspiration it just happens spontaneously sometimes. So like, especially when new things are coming out and like right now, um, AI is becoming a big thing. Yes. And so <laughs> I've been able to create some really cool things just with AI, but it's baby software, right? It's only been out for maybe six right. months or less or something like that. So there, you come out with some really wild things, <laughs> you know, but sometimes it's those wild things that just makes your brain click and like, oh, okay, well, uh, if I tweak this, 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 and this, that's like uh, problem solving. Creativity is kind of like problem solving. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it happens spontaneously. I'm just like playing around and I just have no plan or <laughs> vision or something. Or sometimes um, I'll draw inspiration from clients. They'll have this vision in their head and I'll bring them in and I'm like, oh, okay. And then I can start getting ideas. It takes a little more research, but <laughs> sure, for sure. Uh, things like that. Um, I draw inspiration from just daily living, um, nature, going outside flowers i love to take pictures of flowers and paint them in photoshop it's really therapeutic actually huh. if you haven't tried it it's a mixer brush it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice it's very therapeutic um but just anywhere just everywhere anywhere um in the morning sometimes if i'm just creatively blocked i do this thing and i forgot what her name is um but she wrote a book called the artist way it's actually a very popular book um in the creative industry and stuff like that and she recommended that when you wake up every morning to write um pages so it's just random writing it's not exactly like a diary it's just you're sitting there you're waking up your brain is fresh and you're just getting all of that muddled stuff out of your brain first thing in the morning and it can okay. be about any like who pissed you off yesterday or <laughs> right. this is like what i need to do today or just random thoughts i'm like oh well the sunset is really pretty and this and that and you're getting all of that clutter out of your head because if you put it on writing it's just something magical happens in the brain so i have this big old notebook in my office so i'll go in there each morning and just kind of write and stuff and it kind of clears my brain for okay. the creativity and the things i need to do yeah kind of just gets it out mm -hmm. like a venting almost kind of yes uh -huh. like do you just unloading yeah kind of a deal especially you know if you happen to wake up in a bad mood that day kind of helps you mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. I'm like yep mm -hmm, it happened okay on to do great things oh, yeah. today because mm -hmm. you expressed it yep mm -hmm. so that that is you know you had mentioned your morning routine earlier so that that is a pretty stable yeah. you do that every morning I'm a creature of habit <laughs> <is very> important. <laughs> yes it is mm -hmm. you know that's something I've, I've learned late in life is being structured because mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a leaf blowing in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes a, I am that too. <laughs> I'm a free-floating hippie. Um, but you know, it, it's, it is interesting how structure, habit, mm -hmm. can really open you up to be more free. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. I still it's it's a you know a concept that I'm not, I'm not uh, native to. So I'm learning it. I'm yes. training myself yes. to be that. Um, and it's it's amazing how that, I started making. I never used to make up my bed. <laughs> right, my mom it's always the little things. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know. And I remember when I was I was a kid, my mom would always make me make up my bed, and it would just frustrate me because mm -hmm. why? I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get it dirty. I mean, I'm gonna you know it's gonna be messed up later tonight. So right. why? You know. Right. <clears throat> but then I started doing that. That was the first thing I did on my steps to training discipline, mm -hmm. and I've been doing it steady for about six, seven years now. Yeah, it just does something to you. Yeah, it's like it's like a fresh start and yeah you know, yeah like a reprogramming yeah mm -hmm. yeah yes. and and it affects everything else everything yeah all the greats do it like steve jobs 
always wear the black turtlenecks or something. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. like, why do I have to worry about what I'm wearing? What I'm going to wear. So, yeah, yeah, got better things to worry about today. <laughs> yeah. and you're, you're right. All of them. Uh, Einstein, you yep. know, they all had their very, they're very meticulous. Mm-hmm. They took their walks at the exact same time. They, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. They ate the same thing at the same time. <laughs> there might be something to that. There so, might. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, 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 that is, that is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, what, do you have any other kind of uh, tricks or tips you may have in that line to kind of help you through, um, you know, navigating your daily routines and in, in life that helps you be more creative or helps you be more functional? Um, not that I can think of that's, off the top of my head the, or anything. Just I just go through my routine or something. That's the big one. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, so, like, uh, okay, the morning routine. What's the biggest challenges that you're facing in your work right now? Okay, so with the industry in whole, I would think just all of the competition out there, very oversaturated ah. right now. So you just I'm constantly have, putting myself out there and doing my best and giving my best because... I mean, I love all my friends and I love, and you know, inspiring people, but at the same time, I got to pay my bills too. Pay so. bills. <laughs> at the end of the day, it is a business and I need to pay my bills. So it's just constantly staying ahead of the times, especially with the technology. Like we were talking about AI and stuff like that. I'm constantly um, trying to continue my education and things like that so I can stay on top of my game and I don't end up getting left behind. So I think yeah, the biggest challenge right now would be the oversaturation. Huh. So um, there are other bump to baby or just photographers focus. in just general. Photographers in general. Well, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, I mean, I did it. I started out, you know, 10 years ago and like, oh, I bought this camera. Let me take your picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, lots of lots of challenges. Um, photography can be quite expensive. It's a so it's a luxury type service. So budgets right now, especially after COVID and mm-hmm. the pandemic and stuff, we all feel like had to navigate around like okay well not only people don't want to leave like how am i going to get you know but also we have to be mindful of our budgets and for sure like that so So, like when when you're getting out there in front of your uh customers Mm -hmm. you know um talking about budget Mm -hmm. is there a certain way that you determine how much you're going to spend on advertising for the month does it depend on revenues from the month before or well, I'm pretty, well, I'm talking about being a creature of habit. So my structure on my schedule is very structurized. So I only do like so many things during the week and um, at certain times during the day. So that really helps me set up like I know how much because I'm pretty consistent uh-huh. um, in bookings right now. So I can consistently know what I am going to make each month. And you just plug it into the cost of doing business gotcha. calculator. So I need to know, OK, I need to hit this number to be able to pay my mortgage this month. So mm. it's just, you know, cost of doing business, a spreadsheet calculator type deal. Gotcha. So. And so how do you do your advertising? Is it, you know, a combination of all the avenues or do you focus on social media or? Oh goodness. Well, social media is a big one. So, um, I always, I'm always trying to throw things out there um, all the time, but the algorithms and things are kind of funny with it. So I really try to get creative as far as, um, advertising the best advertising, that has worked for me in my business is word of mouth, word of mouth. So go and, you know, give your client a really good product, something that you're proud of, something that they're proud of. Yeah. And then I'll um, just give exceptional quality service because people, especially moms, mm-hmm. they like to talk <laughs> and yes. like to show off their babies and like, Oh, well go see Kimberly. You know, she, we, she just did our newborn pictures and they're amazing and things like right. that. So the word of mouth has been my best my best friend yeah. over the last decade. Um, I did this thing called the referral program. I'm just now bringing back into the business. It's been a big hit. So when my clients would go and refer new people to me and they would book with me, I would give that referring client $50 in credit to spend ah. in the studio and stuff like okay. that. I think I had one client and she made like $300 in credit in just one month. <laughs> oh, wow. She's telling she everybody. Used it. Yeah, she's telling everybody. So, you know, make, you know, get people excited and, yeah. you know, and they'll go out and they'll tell people about you. Um, advertising as well. I've had a mall display. So there was a couple of summers I would go and have all my work in the middle of Dillard's, in front of Dillard's yeah. and just kind of like be there available for people so they can see my work. Because there's just something about like when you're actually holding a picture or flipping through a book rather than just seeing all digitalized on social media. So that was actually a pretty good, a pretty good hit. Um, advertising. 
trying to think of other ways I've done it. Oh, I also have displays. Um, I partner with like-minded businesses and stuff. So I've got my displays and stuff like the Midland community, the Midland women's clinic. I know they've got my work uh-huh. in there and I've gotten some clients from there because they're the OBGYN people. <laughs> they're right. the baby deliveries. So yeah. yeah, partner with people like that. Um, doctor's offices, pediatrician's offices, um, things that I know that my clients are going to because my yeah. market is mainly mom's. Right. So I'm going to go where the moms are. You get in front of your customer. You get in front of the customer. Yeah. Don't just completely rely on social media. So mm-hmm. people will get frustrated. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not feel like my business is talking like, OK, well, what are you doing to advertise? Are you because you could be the best at what you do. But if nobody knows who you are, you're mm-hmm. not going to get the bookings. <laughs> that is that is You've so true. You've got to do what you need to do. Um, expos like my wedding photographer friends. We have a really big wedding expo that they do two to three times a year uh-huh. and stuff like that. So just kind of think of things where you need to actually get out in front of people. That that is. I'm so glad you said that right there. So that's spectacular advice. Mm-hmm. So entrepreneurs, if y'all are listening, I don't care what kind of business that you run. Any business. Any business. Any business. Know your customer. Mm-hmm. Know where they're at, and know them well enough to get in front of them. Right, right. What, where what are they? What do they usually gravitate to? Where are they going to be at? Mm-hmm. Where are their eyes going to be looking? Well, it's like when you're playing darts, right? It's like you know you need you want to hit <laughs> yeah. the the bullseye. You know you just don't want to like just randomly, randomly throw things throw. like yeah, yeah. I'm like oh, you know I could maybe might get that client, but if you're just concentrating on that specific demographic that you're going for, not to mention you know, it can be expensive. If you don't know who you're. If you don't know, if you're just mm-hmm. advertising to everybody. <laughs> right. So, you know, it helps you save your dollars, too, when you're advertising, if you're just going for that specific. For sure. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a reason that uh, they call it the target market. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that's who you're targeting. That's who you're isolating. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's, a, you know, we were talking about technology earlier. That's that's huge advancements happened over the last several years where now you can target directly your customer. Exactly. You exactly. know, before it was just radio and television mm-hmm. and a newspaper. To whereas you put an ad out there, spends thousands of dollars on it. Well, I mean, it's like a sh- big shotgun. Yeah, you have yeah. no idea what you're going to hit. Mm-hmm. You know, but now you can, with the digital world, you can laser point that. And then what you're, what you're doing is you're putting your actual physical product in front of your customer at the locations they're going to be at. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, so that's, that's another form of direct. Well, some things target. just never die, like the physical of it just i agree when that, like when you're reading a book like oh yeah that kindle oh, and my yes. phone is really great and a pinch but it just yeah. does not replace to me the feel of actually mm. the, you know in hand paper <laughs> use all the senses yeah. the <laughs> smell the, yeah the smell to, you know uh-huh. people you know people no people recognize and yeah yeah it just kind of tugs on their hearts a little more than just throwing it relying completely on social media so for sure for sure i think that that's that's uh that's refreshing to hear Mm -hmm. um because i think that's where a lot of business owners do fail especially startup companies Mm -hmm. you know because they all a lot of them never say all right don't ever say all. (laughs) a lot of them will just be like my product's amazing everybody's gonna love my product Mm -hmm. and then just they put it out there and say well how come nobody's coming right Mm -hmm. well whereas you approach it from a different angle it's like okay I love what I'm doing. I love this. Now, where are my customers at so I can get in front of them? Yes. Yeah. You know, to whereas, you know, because not everybody's going to love all your products, right? Like yeah. Apple, right? It's a great product. And yes. they were the first trillion dollar company, but not everybody loves Apple. Nope. <laughs> my best friend hates Apple. She'll never switch. <laughs> I know several of them. She's an Android yeah. girl all the way. She'll never switch. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, can you name something? that has helped you become successful? Name something that helped me become successful. Mm, so many things. Um, education, continuing my education. Mm, perfect. A, I want to get one. into that. We'll come back to that. There was that. Uh, oh, my goodness. Something that helped me become successful. That's a big one for me, the education. Good That's customer huge. service. Um, creating the cust- creating the client experience. I love that. Yes. Helped me become extremely successful. I'm um, just coming in. I have a nice studio um, over by Hobby Lobby off the loop and stuff. So you're coming into my nice studio. It's comfortable. I know my clients are going to be there for several hours and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's just little things, lighting candles, having drinks available, snacks available, have a TV for the kiddos. They can watch Disney Plus on and things like that. Just making it as comfortable as I can for them and just 
setting up for that wonderful client experience. Right. So just people, people talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And plus when you're taking photographs, mm -hmm. especially, you know, babies, you know, and mothers who are pregnant and not already not comfortable. Exactly. You know, yes. like, I, mean, I didn't feel my most beautiful when I was pregnant with my kids, <laughs> but you go in there, you get dolled up, you get your makeup done and mm -hmm. you go and you know, this photographer is going to take care of you and make sure that you're in their most, your most beautiful authentic self in front of the camera and it just makes people feel good so you do that entire process you do their makeup as well i don't do the makeup i hire out if they choose to okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but you can yeah you can come in so we have in the dressing room with all the dresses i might stylize the clients ah. sometimes so i have a whole closet full of these really nice maternity dresses that clients are welcome to borrow and stuff so it's everything everything sets up for that experience i try to make it where they don't have to think so hard. <laughs> yeah. Make it as easy as I can mm -hmm. for the client because that's what they want. You know, your clients don't want to work. <laughs> no, that that's it's a that that's hard. a mm -hmm. uh, extremely valid point, important mm -hmm. point for any business owner to yeah. remember too. It's it's about the customer experience. How does the customer feel after they leave? your office, your location. Right, exactly. Do they come out feeling good or do they feel, <laughs> yeah. feel like, oh my God, did I just waste all this money? Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or it's like, wow, I, that was only that much? You know, mm -hmm. like that was so awesome. That was a great right, experience. Right. Plus mm -hmm. these pictures are, are fantastic. Yes. You created value mm -hmm. for your customer. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. and the value that they, ex that exceeded their expectations. Right, mm -hmm. when you start from beginning to end. So I'll help in give them inspiration and things that they like to set up for what they're wanting. And then at the very end, while they're picking out their pictures and things, and cause I know that it's going to hang up in their home for like ever. Yeah. It's a legacy leaving product. So legacy leaving. Yes. I like that. I'm providing like leg their legacy. Yeah. Uh -huh, to hang up in their home forever. So it's very, very important that it comes you, out. Right. Yes. That it comes out. Okay. But you're, you're a rock star from start to finish. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And then these clients are going to have to go home and look at these pictures and you, they want to feel good when uh -huh. they, uh, they don't want to have buyer's remorse or regrets or things mm -hmm. like that. Or think of like, oh man, that photographer is just so mean. I can't stand to <laughs> stare at that picture anymore. Or, you know, things right. like that. You know, invoke the feelings kind of a deal. So yeah. You, you want your clients to feel good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So is, is that something that you just kind of picked up along the way or you've always kind of, um, had that mentality? I think I've always had that mentality. I've always been a people pleaser. <laughs> Not quite a yes girl. I, I think one of the best things also I've done is learn how to say no, know your limits. Good, yes. Know your limits mm -hmm. and stuff. So when I finally found my voice to kind of say no to things that I just know were not going to make my heart happy and bring value to the customer, then um, that was a wonderful thing. But yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, the the education aspect, you have you have quite the education background. Oh. Um, so you, you do have a business degree, an associate's of business. Mm -hmm, you mentioned yes. that earlier. Yes, um, that I got through Midland College. Yes. And then you have several more here. Uh, you have so well certifications, right? Mm -hmm. Professional photographers and certified administrative professional. Mm -hmm. um, and but here recently. You received, tell us what you received here in January, a master's. Oh, right? yeah. So in um, January, I received my master of photography degree through the Professional Photographers Association. Congratulations. So, yes. It was a, um, about five years in progress and stuff wow. like that. So it took me, yeah, a little bit, but I love the journey. So it's not just about the destination. It was about the journey. <laughs> of course. To get yes. there. So, yes, I am officially a master photographer now. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and you're the only one in the area? As far as I know. I mean, if somebody is, please prove me wrong. I don't want to, like, boast like, yeah. if I'm not correct. But as far as I know, I am the only master photographer through this association in um, in Midland in Odessa. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. that, that's fantastic. Yes. You know, so you are the expert in, in your field. I'd like to think so. For sure. <laughs> you have a master's in it. You know, yes. That's uh -huh. pretty cool. I've yes. never, never knew there was a master of photography. Yeah. That was, news. that was news to me. Yeah. I even brought my, my little, my little thingy. Yeah. I brought ah. my, my little. <laughs> well, let's, let's see it. Yeah. yeah show everybody. So, yeah. So it's like the, the PPA. Uh, yeah. We all, when you earn your degrees and stuff like that, you put your, I got bronze medal in competition a couple of times and image excellence awards and my certification. So. Yeah. Super cool. There you Isn't go. That cool. So yeah, when we go to our events and stuff like that, do PPA events, you everybody wears these and Ah, yeah. they all know. Shows off their stuff, yes, yes. To see um 
the masters in the field. They've cut so many. Sometimes I think they're going to break their necks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess yeah. they're used to carrying a camera too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the camera too. <laughs> That's like a ten pounds right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it, so you're talking about always uh, continuing your education. Yes, never so, stop. So this master's is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. um, but you also go to conferences very yeah. often, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. I love conferences. I just, I get to feel like I get to be with my people. Yeah. It's just something about being with like thousands of your people and they all get you, they all get your quirks and, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and what gets your, you know, your brain running and things like that. So it's, yeah, it's good to go out and be with people, like-minded people. For sure. It's, it's also another great way to get, get inspiration. Absolutely. So people you admire, people that inspire you, people that you look up to. So sure. Networking and all that good stuff. Right. You're always meeting people that are on the same track. Mm hmm Yeah. You know, and you get to talking and, oh, this is what I've done. This is what I've uh, experienced. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Mm hmm And the dialogue goes back and forth and you come back like, oh, you got all this going on in your head. Yes, yes. What can, all what the can, ideas they, come back. I'm like, I'm going to go and I'm going to go buy all that stuff and I'm going to go try it. My yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> well, you know, that that's and that's another part about entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. being a business owner, taking that risk. Yep. You know, constantly growing, constantly trial, stretching. Yeah, trial and error. Mm -hmm. It's definitely been a, my contract is actually originated from all of the trials and errors. I'm like, oh, well, that was not really great. Let's go put that in the contract so I don't have to deal uh, with that next time and things like that. So, yes, business is a lot of hard work and you do have to walk through the fire sometimes, too. But you learn from it as well. That's the goal, right? You're supposed to learn from mm -hmm. from what you've been through. Yes, yes. Both the good and the bad. And then go share that knowledge with your friends so they don't have to. <laughs> so speaking of with your friends, so you are the president. Uh, tell us about your nonprofit. That you're okay, so we, um, I, I'm a founder of our local chapter for the PPA. Um, we're the Midland Odessa Professional Photographers Association. So trying to get our local peoples involved and engaged in things and network and try to make see who's in town and let's make friends and let's learn things from each other and try to inspire each other and lift each other up locally in the community so yeah networking that, and fellowship that that's and that's much needed yes yeah for sure mm -hmm. so th that this organization wasn't a, it hasn't been around too long right You're, no. you founded it here we're still in the baby stage yeah so we're about maybe five months old ah, right now our goal yeah. is to um you know dot all our i's and cross our t's and actually become an official affiliate of the ppa but there, there's things that we have to do before that can happen so ah, okay. mm -hmm. so you can um, when you come to our meetings and um see our speakers and things like that you're earning like merits and things that you can use towards getting degrees and things through ah, okay. the ppa like the master of photography degree ah <clears throat> so um how many members do you guys have we have 25 right now that's a lot i'm very proud <laughs> yes. i yeah. mean for only being five months old yes. 25 mm -hmm. wow yeah that's amazing. So the, the networking aspect of that alone, mm -hmm. you know, in, in an area of this Odessa and Midland. So 25 is a great number. Yes. Yes. Even if you've been in, uh, if you were around for several years, I would say well, that's a good number still. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. Do you have a goal? Do you know how much, how many members you, you want to have in there? No, I don't like to cap myself in that kind go. of a way. The sky's the limit for me. There you go. <laughs> I it. cap myself. You know? <laughs> Why? Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Love it because, you know, what you put out there is very powerful, right? Right. Yes. That's, yes. that's amazing, though. Um, what else is coming up uh, in your in your world? Are there any conferences coming up or any events or are there are, is there such a thing as competitions in the photography world? Where... Yes. Yes. So we do. Um, we do do competitions. So um it's not really competing against your peers. You're competing against yourself and you're putting your art in front of these master judges and they're going against 12 elements of um, like technical excellence and storytelling and things like that. And it gets rated on how many marks did you hit, which is really wonderful because it kind of helps me like it keeps my stuff polished. It helps also bring inspiration mm -hmm. and things like that. And I use a lot of my client work actually into competitions and clients just feel so like happy and proud and yeah. stuff when I'm just throwing their, like their pictures into these competitions and they do very well. They're like, Oh, well, my baby won awards and yeah. you know, oh, through this, this, this and that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah see you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so competitions are fun and stuff. Um, you get medals, trophies and, um, things like that. So, but it also helps you keep, stay on your toes I that bet. you're giving your best out there. It helps you be your best. 
helps you stay sharp. Mm -hmm. I think a good healthy competition is good. Yeah. Competition <laughs> good is for, good for everybody. Um, as far as conferences and stuff go, we do like the competitions at the conference and stuff. I do this um, thing and I absolutely love it. I look forward to it every single year, um, Texas School. Um, so the PPA, the TPPA, the state affiliation holds this huge, large school in Addison, Texas. And I think thousands of people go, I, I, I want to say like 2000. I don't know. It's really, really big. I could be over exaggerating, but it kind of feels like, especially if I'm born and raised in Midland, I guess everywhere seems big to me, <laughs> <laughs> but you go and it's like a whole semester of photography classes squashed into a week. So you're going, it's like a school. It's actually like a school. So you're going to get up at eight, go to class, and then you get out at five. But the best thing at five is you go mingle with your friends in the bar area and uh, yeah. <laughs> go make a new friend and yeah. and network and stuff. They do like parties, parades. It's really nuts. Parades. They do parades. Yeah. So um, there's this one night where they do a costume party. And so all the teachers and staff will have like a parade and stuff and go <laughs> show off their costumes and then go go dance into the dance hall and everybody does parties all oh, night fun. so you're getting your education in the day and you're partying with all your friends at night yeah for five days so we always come back exhausted but <laughs> <laughs> it's intense but it's really cool so i would recommend all my photography friends go at least one year because you'll be you'll get hooked and you'll always want to go back mm -hmm. that's that's a, that's that's super cool right there mm -hmm. um so speaking of that you know if you were to give some advice to uh someone who's, I like taking pictures. How can I make this a business? What advice would you give to someone just looking at it? Goodness, just my best advice is don't give up. If it's your dream and if it's something that you want to do, you just don't give up. It's going to be hard at first, especially the biggest challenge we have right now is all of the competition out there. So sometimes your stuff can get lost into the sea of everything that's like everything everywhere all at once the bagel <laughs> your stuff might get lost in that bagel if you haven't seen that movie it's awesome um but yeah just don't give up just keep going don't give up so um learn from your mistakes and just strive to be better than you were yesterday there you go mm -hmm. it's that incremental improvement progress over perfection yes 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 something mm -hmm. i'm learning <laughs> that's, that's a tough one that's yes tough. but it's 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 practical and it's it's very it's powerful advice mm -hmm. to do that perfection's a very high bar mm -hmm. to go for and you know what i think sometimes it just doesn't exist we're always striving for something that doesn't really really exist what is perfect what so is perfect. just be better than you than you were yesterday you were yesterday yeah mm -hmm. I, I love that advice that's great um i do have a kind of a uh, concerning the ai uh, you know, I know there's this, you know, there's this debate going on yes. right now. The mighty debate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on, on that? Well, uh, it can be kind of a slippery slope and things like that. I kind of use it for just to grab elements and things like that. So um, I just try to be really careful and not like copycat that whole idea or right. something. I'm just like grabbing elements from here and there. I use it more for like inspiration mm -hmm. as far as that goes, but. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to, it's just so new right now. It's yeah. really hard to gather all the thoughts and make a final conclusion and stuff. But I do like the inspiration mm. that comes from it. Now, I feel like if there's an artist or something and they just don't want their stuff in this engine and this and that, they, I think they should have the right to say something or things like that. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's just too new for me right now to really have a final right. conclusion. But I have liked what I've been <laughs> doing with it so far. Like I did a maternity image and honestly, all I did was... Um, write in props for like flying fabric and stuff like that and incorporated it with some like glitter sparkles and things like that. And she just glowed like she was a goddess. So I think you know, when you're pulling and drawing inspiration, yeah. just kind of using elements here and there. Yeah. Now, I don't think you should like just write in your prompt and maybe throw in one of your, like, your little pictures and have it do all the work for you. Right. No, that's kind of, that's cheating. <laughs> okay, so this, that's cheating. I don't uh, think you need to let it do all the work for you. You need to put your own, you need to put you in there too. For sure. Mm -hmm. so that, that's what gives it that, that authentic human yes. quality. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, cause a lot, a lot of those AI pictures, they're gorgeous. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. But. Not... Can you really take credit for it though? Right. Yeah. The machine right. did it. The machine did it. <laughs> you know, uh, it's almost like these machines are almost like a, you take Dolly you know, and then you put him on, you know, some acid or something, <laughs> whatever that comes up with. You're like, wow, that's, that's insane. Some of the but, things it comes up with is crazy. I think somebody did a prompt. Like, let's see, what did I, 
I saw it on my social media feed or something like like, like Super Mario on trial for war crimes or something like that. So him and Luigi are just sitting there. <laughs> but the AI just came up with it. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's just really crazy. Cats fighting in outer space or I don't know. It can be kind of inspirational. Just It's just cool. It's outside the box. Yes, you're thinking outside the box. Because right. yeah. uh, the AI program doesn't have that box, right? Mm -hmm. No, nope. yep, and it's constantly learning. Constantly. It's, co it's constantly learning, so oh. I'm really excited to see where it's going to go in the future. I really feel like if you're doing this type of photography, you're doing composites and more of the fine art kind of feel, I think AI is going to be the way of the future, so I feel like mm. it's something I need to go in and learn myself. Otherwise, if I'm not doing it, somebody else is going to be They're doing it. They're going to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, and you'll end up falling behind, so. You know, and in, in, in about the... Uh, forgot where I, I think it was a podcast, I'm not sure. They were talking about um, the, the, there's a Chinese, like Chinese checkers, mm -hmm. right? Well, they were playing against the AI and this AI did a move mm -hmm. that nobody had ever done in the history of Chinese checkers. That's scary. Yes, <laughs> That's but it was a, a scary. perfectly valid move, mm -hmm. followed the rules, but nobody had ever, he, they the, they were thinking, oh, the AI is, there's no move he can make. He's going to lose. Yeah. It yep. made that move and won, right? So, Found a way. Sure did. So I, I think it, it goes to, you know, as humans, we, we are conditioned, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, there there is a box around us. Yes. You know, uh, I think it, it it's up to us to kind of work out of that box, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with intention. Yes. And purpose. I right? agree. I agree. Um, but the, the AIs. Right now, they're they're con continually expanding that. Yeah, they, 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 they don't care. <laughs> yeah. Kind of makes you wonder when is Sarah Connor going to come back and get <laughs> uh, Skynet. When am I going to see Sarah, Sarah Connor getting chased by Terminator? <laughs> you know, it, it's coming. It's coming soon. I feel. <laughs> I mean, if it was up, I mean, you know, if the if Elon Elon doesn't, he's not too. Uh, what do you call it? Um, he's wary. Of the AI and the future of well, if Elon's wary, I got oh goodness, we're gonna have to watch. Out. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, it, it so that it's it's uh, it's something that's gonna be across all industries. Mm -hmm. um, it's some some form or another. Even, oh yes. Even, like even right now, um, I was looking up. I I got sent something to write blogs. Uh huh. Yeah, it'll help you write blogs faster. I was actually demonstrating that yesterday at my networking at the. Um, Oh. MOPPA event we had okay. here last night. So we were going into AI. I'm like, wow, I can even write like prompts for you or like blogs. And uh -huh. I think um, my father-in-law, how AI wrote my mother-in-law a song. And so he just kind of put prompts in there like, okay, she's a beautiful blonde lady who likes cats. <laughs> And it wrote her, it was extremely funny. It kind of made her sound like a crazy cat lady, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was just really, really cool. I'm like, wow, other than the crazy cat lady part, I mean, and, you know, this is really, really cool. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And it just wrote out the lyrics or actually sang a song? It didn't actually sing the song. Oh, okay. It just wrote out the lyrics. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably going to be doing that soon too, but... Mm -hmm. And like you would put in like an example of whose voice you want it to be in. Yes. Yes. And set the tone or something like country <laughs> Western or something. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Country Western rap. Yeah. And sets the tone. You know, um, that was another discussion. So that when AI was making some music, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't too, it, 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 it was perfect. So perfect. In fact, that people listening to it didn't resonate with it mm -hmm. because it was too on point oh yeah you didn't connect with it didn't connect because because mm -hmm. we connect with that slightly that slight those slight flaws mm -hmm. yeah you know without even thinking about it mm -hmm. you know but if it's too perfect it's mm, yeah it's I, not real i get it yeah it's not personal right mm -hmm. and we are so used to that real that authentic mm -hmm. personal especially with music yes you know, because as tight as any music band can be, mm -hmm. it's always just slightly off. Yeah, there you go. And that's kind of the beauty of it. Yes. Like, what what is that Japanese concept uh, that there there's a perfection? There's no perfection, but oh, there's I know a what flaw. you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know the name of it, but I know what you're talking about. There's a flaw in everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And that's the beauty of it. That's the perfection of it. That there is the flaw. I agree. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, do you have anything uh, you want to say to the People out there, last shots. Last shots? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Just go for your dream. I mean, if it's something that you want and it's something you're passionate about, just go for it. I mean, 
you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if you fail, I mean, pick yourself up, try again. There Keep you on go. going. If it's something you love, just go for it. Go with it with all your heart. Trust God. Have faith. Great words of wisdom right there. Yes. <laughs> Thank well, you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so if someone wants to get a hold of you to, for some pictures, how, how do they do that? All right. Um, very easy to find. So my studio is actually, um, I'm right next door to Party City, Hoff Loop 250 here in Midland. I have a website. It's www.camcowanphoto.com. Or I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook and I'm also on Instagram. So At Kim Cowan Photo? Mm-hmm. At Kim Cowan Photo. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Just awesome. type in my name. You'll see me. There you go, guys. Uh, Y'all heard it. If you uh, if you have a bump, there's going to be a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for anything you need phot- uh, photography for, she's a, she's a, literally a master at photography here. So um, in the area, give her a call. Hit her up. Thank you very much, Kimberly, for coming on with us here at Bam Biz Talk. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. This was so fun. It was a great conversation. Yes. Yeah. So you take care, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you.